everybody is lying about what the iPad is capable of and why you need one. So I recently purchased an M1 iPad Pro 12.9 inch because I was sold on the fact that it had the M1 chip, it was going to be incredibly fast, I can slide it into my bag, I can edit photos on Lightroom with the Apple Pencil and just, it's gonna feel great. And then I started using it. You see, the iPad Pro has these amazing specs with the M1 chip, same as what goes into some of the MacBooks and it's ridiculously powerful. The M1 chip is quite possibly more powerful than this iMac that I got from 2020 that cost me at the time three and a half grand fully specced out so the m1 chip is just about on par with that and now it's in an ipad pro think of the possibilities that you could have with an m1 chip in an ipad pro yeah you can think of so many possibilities you can think of the countless things you could do for some reason apple can't okay let's put it like this ford sell a car that does 200 mile an hour ferrari also sell a car that's 200 mile an hour. Let's say that both these companies are going to charge exactly the same price for both cars. Now, Ferrari, they're going to let you do the full 200 mile an hour, whereas Ford are going to tell you, yeah, it's possible of 200 mile an hour, but we're going to limit it to 100 mile an hour for the same price. Which one are you going to buy? That's what it's like between the M2 iPad Pro and the M2 MacBook Air. They're exactly the same price, they have exactly the same processing power. The MacBook Air is miles and miles and miles in front of the iPad. Okay, so let me go over a few of the good things that I like about the iPad Pro, because it's not all bad, it's not all bad, but let me just go over some of the good things. So one of the good things is, I do love the, the size of the display, like, it's amazing. I like the 12.9 inch display, it's great. You can see everything nice and clear, the XDR display, Apple always does a great job on displays, regardless of what device you buy. Love sketching on the Apple pencil, love that, mocking up stuff and drawing and you know, taking notes and things like that. The Apple Pencil's great. And that's about as far as it goes. So here's where the iPad falls flat for me. Everybody is lying to you about how good the iPad is for your workflow. They're always trying to tell you that the iPad is a MacBook killer. No, you can edit all your photos on iPad, edit all your videos on iPad. No, you cannot edit anything on this. It just doesn't make sense. So I sat down last night to edit some photos from yesterday and straight away plugging in a device into this and then loading the photos onto it took way too long. It just takes to, it can do it, but it just takes way too long. The time it took just to get 175 photos from an SD card onto this took longer than it would have taken me to put the photos onto my laptop and edit them. And then not only that, you can't work from an SSD on this. You can't plug in a hard drive and work from the SSD. You have to pull all the files from the SSD onto the iPad so that it's stored locally, taking up storage on the iPad so that you can edit and do all the stuff you need to with that with them folders. It just makes no sense. Now, don't get me wrong, editing photos on the iPad feels great with the Apple Pencil. You can mask everything out with the Apple Pencil. You're sliding sliders, you're changing graphs, and it feels great. You feel like an artist on this thing. You genuinely do. However, logically, it makes no sense to slow all my workflow down and take twice as long because I want to feel like an artiste. Photoshop on the iPad is the most watered down, useless piece of shit on the planet. If you want to Photoshop anything, do it on a computer. You could even use a free version in a library that would be better than the one that you get on the iPad. It is useless. I don't even think you've got a polygon tool on the iPad Pro. And the fact that it's £1,249 for a iPad Pro with the M2 chip against a £1,249 for a MacBook Air with an M2 chip, it just makes no sense. There is nothing that you can do on the iPad Pro that you cannot on the iPad Mini. Yes, it may take you a little bit longer, but is it really worth shelling out nearly 
what, 400 quid for the M1 and then another 700 quid on top of the iPad mini for the M2 iPad Pro, when this does exactly the same stuff. Now, if you do, if you are just interested, oh, I just want a bigger display, I think it's what, five, just under 600 quid for an M1 iPad Air where you get a bigger display. And that's the same processing power as an iPad Pro from 2021. For 400 quid cheaper, yeah, you're not getting the ProMotion display, yeah, you're not getting the XDR display, yeah, you're not getting the size. You don't need any of that because none of it actually benefits you. The iPad doesn't benefit you. It makes no sense. And the whole reason for this, the entire reason that the iPad in 2022 and well before then has does not make sense is simply because Apple won't open up the software to be capable of so much more. If we got a full desktop version of Photoshop and a full desktop version of Final Cut, then maybe maybe the iPad would be okay. They still need to fix other issues like the SSD issue we talked about earlier. It's just a absolute shit show with the iPad. It's in such a gray area that it makes no sense. And then not to mention, if you want a keyboard, it's gonna be another, what, 280 quid or another 350 quid on top of the 1,250 quid that you're gonna to have to spend off for an iPad. So that takes you to like well over, you know, 1,600 quid, especially if you want the Apple Pencil as well, which has just gone up in price. So you're talking into like 1,800 quid for an Apple Pencil a keyboard and an iPad when you could literally just get an even more specced out version of a MacBook Air and be capable of full desktop capability, full video editing software, full photo editing software, full graphic design, anything. And until Apple sorts it out and gets the software to a point where, yeah, the stage manager that's just come on iOS 16.1 or whatever it is, is fine and it makes it feel it makes it feel like a desktop but at the end of the day just because you can put tabs on top of other tabs isn't what a desktop is a desktop for a desktop is a desktop simply because you can do desktop stuff like run Final Cut and Photoshop. It's not because I can pull tabs in front of other tabs. These kind of micro adjustments can only take you so far. Now I'm just, now you might be thinking, oh yeah, you're just talking to photographers and videographers at the minute. You, you keep mentioning Lightroom and Photoshop and Final Cut. Now, if you do draw on an iPad, if it is your job to draw on an iPad, that's perfectly fine. You are left with no other option than to buy an iPad. But do you need the 12.9 iPad Pro? The My point is, the iPad Pro is useless. And every other iPad below that is far better money spent. Because once you start reaching that thousand pounds for an iPad, it starts to make no sense because you need a MacBook. And that is exactly why I'm returning the iPad Pro. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the stuff you already love to do. I'll see you in the next one. Silly.